I thought maybe we would start with how you met, and I hear it is a meeting that did not occur in the hallowed halls of Hill Auditorium or at Lincoln Center, <laughs> but rather here at the Ross Business School. That's right. You should talk about that, <laughs> you know. Well, I think it was, it was a great opportunity. I think I won the award for coming the farthest uh, right. for, for, that, for that session here at Ross, but I'd never been to the University of Michigan before, and coming to the Ross School with all these great colleagues, meeting Ken, meeting the wonderful people from the National Art Strategies, um, and it made a real impression. So Ken and I met, and, and we said to each other, how is it that we've never met? Yeah. Because I knew all about UMS here, um, I know Ken's brother, Norman Fisher, who teaches cello at Rice, at the Shepherd School of Music at Rice in Houston, where I used to live. And uh, so I think we just made a connection immediately. I think, I don't know that I knew Ken was a horn player, but we, we sussed that out pretty quickly. And Ken took me on uh, a late night, a rogue late <laughs> night tour of literally every performance venue on the, on the University of Michigan campus, but it was so clear how, what a special place this was, and of course Ken is so effusive and wonderful about what happens here and why it's so special. So that's where we first met. Right. And uh, then let's talk about, you know, the Philharmonic Residency, because right. you've also worked together now, and there you are with the, you know, oldest orchestra in the country, and yeah. one of the oldest, is, is UMS the oldest? Well, we're the presenter? oldest of the university-related university presenters uh, at 138 years, like you said. Well, from Melbourne, uh, Matthew came to the New York Philharmonic, and of course this is an orchestra that we love and that we've had coming here for a number of years. And uh, in 2013, they were here, where we had a chance actually to work together yeah. in, in building that uh, program. And then of course the big residency of 2015, which had some really distinctive uh, features, but in working together, yeah. of course, we're deepening that relationship. He's getting to know a bit more about Ann Arbor, and, um, and we're able to do some great things together. Well, I remember I was here for 2013, so not too long after I'd started uh, at the New York Philharmonic, and um, the Philharmonic you know, had been coming here, I think 1916 was mm -hmm. the first. That's right. You know, that was before the New York Philharmonic had gone to Europe or really toured anywhere internationally. They were here in Ann Arbor at, at, at Hill. And uh, so I remember Ken and I, Ken took me to breakfast at Zingerman's Roadhouse. So it was important for me to understand these Classic. iconic <laughs> landmarks here in Ann Arbor. And we just, you know, the wheels started turning right there. And I started telling Ken about some of the orchestral training initiatives that we'd started, really trying to work intensively with young musicians to help them not just understand how to play their instrument. I mean, they, they get a great education about that, you know, at SMTD or at a great conservatory, but you know the fine craft of orchestral playing. I remember we got really excited, so we thought, let's think about a way to have a regular presence for the New York Philharmonic here in Ann Arbor, and then to build a lot of rich activity around the main stage concerts. So I think when we were here in 2015, we played three main stage concerts, but we did 35, um, I don't want to call them ancillary in a, in a smaller way, but really important events around that at the music school but across the university and at the halftime show oh yeah well, there was that there was a there was a halftime well, show well and, and don't you love uh, you know that that we have now a person who grew up in the midwest but also went to a big 10 school uh, now it's Indiana. They, I know. They're, they're I was generally ask better about that. in swimming and we basketball. Gonna, we weren't going to mention Indiana specifically. <laughs> than, in, than in football, but there was a sense of what can happen on game day. Yeah. And then you, you, when you decided who, who were the best people on that field, brass well, players. I mean, the brass players were thrilled about doing it. And Alan Gilbert, our music director, conducted part of, part of the show. Uh, but it was amazing to say, I think it was about a thousand musicians. The Choral Union was the, the Michigan band. I think maybe alumni, alumni members of the band. Michigan mm -hmm. band. So to see a thousand musicians out there and really doing it to celebrate um, UMS, the university, but that the New York Philharmonic was there. I mean, it was just a very special moment. And our players in, in New York still talk about this. I mean, this was really one of the most memorable things that they've done. And, you know, being a member of the New York Philharmonic, you get to do some pretty memorable <laughs> things along the way. But that was incredibly special, and I have a big photo in my office in New York um, that Ken and UMS sent to me, and it's really, it's a special thing. It was one of those, it's a, one of those kinds of things that really deepens a relationship between an ensemble, 
a, a presenting organization, but especially the community. And imagine what we can do for the next residency, which is going to be coming up in, uh, in, November. Uh, in November of this year. And it just happens to be, you know, approaching the centenary of Leonard Bernstein, a man who not only loved that orchestra, but boy, did he love Ann Arbor and coming here. We're going to remember Bernstein in a very special way. Yeah. Young, it's the young people's yeah. concert. So I think it's great because it's, you know, it's not just uh, an entire homage to, to Lenny. It's, it's really a, a testimonial for all the things that he did. So, um, you know, the opening, the opening concert will be with the incoming music director of the New York Philharmonic, Jaap van Sweden, who would never have even begun a conducting career have, had it not been for Leonard Bernstein, who was then conducting the Concertgebouw, um, asked Yap, who was the concert master, to conduct a little bit so he could go out into a concert hall and listen on a tour. Um, and Yap had never even conducted before. And he'll tell this story when he comes to, to, to Michigan this fall, but to do a young people's concert. I mean, the, the, the concerts actually started, these young people's concerts started in the 20s in New York, but they were catapulted to this unbelievably iconic status in the 1950s with Leonard Bernstein because they were on televised on CBS yeah. then. Um, back when major networks televised something like the Young, young People's Concerts and of course Bernstein was on television a lot. Um, and then of course we're doing his music. We're doing the, the Third Symphony, the Kaddish Symphony, which is an incredibly powerful work here. So um, it's, a, it's a great mix and some of the things that we've talked about around the residency are also very, very exciting. Um, in terms of how they really engage students, how they engage the, you know, the greater University of Michigan community, and Arbor community, Southeast Michigan. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. A really memorable next residency has been uh, was something we've been working on all year. Now, didn't I hear as well that it was during the halftime show that you started even considering UMS? Rosie, my wife, had reminded me of a conversation that we'd had before we went to New York, and that conversation was, it's a, such an amazing opportunity. We're going to New York, and you know I'm so happy for you to have this chance to work with the Philharmonic. Um, and the discussion was sort of what happens at some point when you're not at the New York Philharmonic. Um, what what would that look like? And she she never said a word during the entire interview process here for UMS. But the day that um, I was announced as being Ken's successor, she reminded me that we, that we had this conversation, and apparently I said you know what I think would be really great is to go to UMS and the University of Michigan after I finished at the New York Philharmonic. <laughs> and I, I really gave her a hard time because I said, I can't believe you never mentioned this during all the last several months of going back and forth. Uh, but I do remember when we were here in 2015, Ken and I were walking uh, to, to the stadium um, the, the day of this, this, this great activity. And I, I think Ken started sort of saying, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my future and uh, you know, possibly stepping down in, in a few years, and there's no question in my mind that that sort of planted a seed. If that was a bug that was put into your ear at that time, I'm thrilled that <laughs> it was, because I hope you know how great I feel about having a friend, uh, a colleague whom I highly respect, an ensemble that he has been leading that has a more than 100-year affiliation with us. We both have Interlochen, yeah. In, our, yeah. in, our, in our experience, which was for both of us a transformative experience. Absolutely. And then, my dear, we both play the French horn. But um, I, was just, I was just thrilled, yeah. Well, as for someone who's looking at a position like this, I mean, one of the things that really makes an impression is, you know, who will be your predecessor and all that they've accomplished and the sort of spirit. Ken has this unbelievable spirit of generosity. I mean, it's, it's unrivaled. Um, I would say, in the performing arts. And, you know, it means a lot to me to be able to come here and succeed him, you know, understanding the, the incredible 30-year tenure that he's had here and how much UMS has evolved into much, much more than an organization who presents concerts. I mean, you know, it, the, the, the evening before I was announced, I called a good colleague, Wynton Marsalis, and we were talking about before we, we started this, and. Um, Winton went on and on about how much he loves UMS, but he talked so much about, it's not just about what's on stage, but what happens around 
the performances, going out into the community, engaging students at the university, engaging Ann Arbor, engaging Southeast Michigan. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's a testament to the work that Ken's done here. So for me, it's a real honor to be able to come here and succeed this guy because he is a great colleague, he is a great friend. Uh, but I know as a professional what an amazing job he's done here. So I consider, you know, a, res a great responsibility, a fun responsibility um, to learn as much as I can from Ken, you know, during this transition period, but also really uphold the legacy that he's created.